Sisters, fellow patriots, what a year in Wisconsin politics. I don't think if you had talked to somebody in November of 2010 and said, what's the craziest thing Scott Walker could do? What's the most bizarre first year of office you think he might have? I don't think anybody could have imagined this. My name is Corey Mason. I'm a state representative from the great city of Racine. And I am here tonight to stand with you and fight for the future of the middle class of Wisconsin. I am here tonight to fight with you for the future of our democracy. But most importantly, I am here tonight because this recall process is the start of healing the politics here in Wisconsin. So we have a great sickness in this state by the name of Scott Walker, who has torn this state apart in a way that we haven't heard maybe since the Civil War. Well, as Lincoln reminded us many times, a house divided against itself cannot stand. And what has Walker done? What has he done with his Koch brother funded special interest giveaway agenda? He's turned this state, our house, against itself to pay for an agenda that benefits by and large the wealthy and large corporations at the expense of the middle class. Brothers and sisters, this cannot stand. Walker began this year by taking away our union rights, and this cannot stand. In the process, he denied our citizens their constitutional rights to get into the state capitol, the seat of our democracy. So much so, I had to carry my desk outside the window of my office so that I could meet with my constituents. Brothers and sisters, this cannot stand. Walker continued by making the largest cuts to public education in the country. This cannot stand. Walker cut job training in the midst of record high unemployment by 30% to our technical colleges. This cannot stand. Our unemployment rate is increasing five times the national average. This cannot stand. Walker cut our beloved University of Wisconsin by $250 million and raised tuition for tens of thousands of students. This cannot stand. Walker eliminated 4,000 clean energy wind jobs. This cannot stand. And the party that's supposed to be for tax cuts, what does Walker do? He rolls back the EITC and the Homestead Tax Credit for the elderly and the poor so they can stay in their homes. This cannot stand. And just last week, I was opposing the Walker administration strenuously on the Joint Finance Committee as they came forward with a proposal to eliminate health care coverage for 64,000 Wisconsin residents, 30,000 of them children, to pay in part for $2.3 billion worth of tax cuts for corporations and wealthy individuals. This, brothers and sisters, this cannot stand. Now, I could go on, as many other speakers made tonight, enumerating a lot of reasons why we should recall this government. But I'm guessing there's not a lot of people here who need persuading that he needs to be recalled. Am I right about that? But I want to remind all of you brothers and sisters and fellow patriots that are here of the things that are under attack, all those things I enumerated. None of these things were given to us. No benevolent being came into existence and said, here are some things that really ought to help the middle class out. Every single one of these things we're fighting for, whether it's unemployment insurance, union rights, public education, all of these are things that people fought and in some cases died for. That's right, we could, all of these things. You know, to quote Frederick Douglass, power concedes nothing without a demand. And that is where we are here today, ladies and gentlemen. Now, some have said to me, isn't it terrible that we are refighting all over again for things that we took for granted for generations? Isn't it awful that we have to fight for these things all over again? And yes, it, it sucks. It's awful that we have to fight for these things all over again. But I think the true test of the longevity of a democracy is that every generation is called upon to secure the American dream for the next. And brothers and sisters, this is the fight of our generation, and we are up to the challenge. Now, I have 
I have two daughters that are here tonight, a two-year-old and a one-year-old, Eleanor Roosevelt Mason and Amelia Earhart Mason. And we're expecting our third uh, any week now. So, I, can we give my wife Rebecca a round of applause, by the way, for... We've had to go through an awful lot of sacrifice this year, and it's, a lot of it's fallen on, on her shoulders so that I can fight for all of us at the Capitol. So, Rebecca, thank you, and I love you. But I have no doubt years from now, when I talk to my daughters and this, this third that's coming any week now, what they, when they ask me one day, what was it like to be in the legislature? I have no doubt I will tell them about 2011. And I have no doubt that I will tell them about the Walker recall. But what is not yet written is the ending of the story. And there are two possible endings in front of us. Two of them. Now, one of them could be where I tell my daughters that once in Wisconsin there was a thriving middle class, where we had a strong public education system that gave them an opportunity to achieve the American dream, and that unions were here for workers to make sure that workers had a fair shot at the middle class. And I'd, I'd be telling them the history lesson of what once was and have to explain that Scott Walker dismantled that long ago. That is one possible future. Or, or I could tell them how in 2011, Scott Walker so divided the state that a group of people from all over the state came together demanding that their rights be restored. Worked tirelessly through the winter of 2011 and 2012 collected hundreds of thousands of signatures with tens of thousands of volunteers, and recalled for the first time in state history the governor of the state of Wisconsin, Scott Walker. Now the next couple months are going to determine what the end of that story is. We've got to do it. But I would encourage you to think of a couple things. Number one, this is a marathon, not a sprint. We've got a long fight ahead of us. And so it's going to be exciting right now because I'm guessing everybody in this room signed the petition on the first day, if not right away, right? Am I right? And I'm guessing in the next week or so, you're going to get everybody you know to sign those three call signatures. Am I right? So here's the tricky part happens. Are we then willing to go the next step and not only ask people that we know, but the people we don't know, will you sign this recall? Are we willing on that snowy January day to make sure we have enough signatures to go out and knock on doors, door to door, and ask people, reclaim our democracy, let's restore our rights. Are we willing to do it? Yeah! Now, I will tell you, I was in the Racine United Wisconsin office on the 15th and signed those recall petitions on the very first day. And we were wondering how many people we were gonna to have to call to fill our volunteer slots and staff the office and what was gonna happen. And so many people came into the office. So many people came into the office. We didn't even have to call anybody. They kept coming and coming and coming. One woman printed the petitions off the United Wisconsin website, collected 100 signatures herself at a city park and said, here you go, I'm ready for the fight. <laughs> If that kind of energy is there, we can reclaim our democracy. But there's going to be moments when you're tired. There's going to be moments when it's damn cold out and you're thinking, man, do I really have to go out and get those signatures today? And I want you to think about those two possible futures. The one where we explain what Wisconsin used to be, or the one where we explain how Wisconsin recaptured our future and moved the state forward. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, early on in this process, I would give these speeches in the Capitol where I was urging Republicans to walk away from this extreme radical Walker agenda, thinking that there was a glimmer of hope, a ray of light that might be available for bipartisanship. Heroes like Dale Schultz of the Republican Party who stepped forward and said no to extreme pressure. And I thought for a time there that with persuasion and reason, people would see their way not to tear the state apart. I have given up on appealing to those Republicans in the legislature, but they will see reason. I, I wish that they would hear and think about what they are doing. But I think that we have to seriously consider if the Republican majorities in the Senate and the Assembly want to follow Scott Walker off the cliff, we have to let him go. There is 
so much at stake right now. But in, in March, when they ran this bill through, after an illegal public notice and all kinds of dirty tricks, I gave a speech where I quoted Wisconsin Justice Edward Ryan, who in 1873 gave the law school commencement address. A young lawyer by the name of Bob LaFollette was in the, in the audience that day, and he credits these words from inspiring his progressive fire. Justice Ryan said, there is looming up a dark new power. The enterprises of the country are aggregating vast corporate combinations of unexampled capital, boldly marking not for economic conquest only, but for real political power. For the first time in our politics, money is taking the field of organized power. The question will arise, and arise in your day. Which shall rule, wealth or man? Which shall lead, money or intellect? Who shall fill public stations, educated and patriotic free men or the feudal serfs of corporate wealth? Now I ended my speech by saying a warning to those Republicans, where I told them that never in my lifetime could I have thought of a time when these words were more prescient. And I said to them, I promise you, I promise you, if you take away people's rights, that the citizens whose rights are being deprived of them today, the public who believes they should have those rights, the members of the legislature who oppose this radical agenda, we will fight you in the Capitol, we'll fight you at home in our districts, we'll fight you in the hearing rooms, we'll fight you in the union halls, we'll fight you door to door, and we will not rest, and we will not surrender until the rights of the people of Wisconsin have been restored. Solidarity, everyone.